everyone. Welcome once again to my YouTube channel, Dr. Casero TV, and to my show, Ask the Cheese Doctor. This is the Spanish, the English version of the uh, Spanish show that I have earlier uh, at 9.30 a.m. New Zealand time, and it is an open window to anyone who wants to learn how to make cheese, <clears throat> okay? I remind you that you are part of a small group that wants to do things different and want to change the world. And, <clears throat> and want to change the world with other products. And the thing is that um, to do that, we don't have like a financial joint venture capital to do that. And we have to do things different and smarter. And to do that, we what we need to do is to learn what happened to the cheese. And um, there is something also called uh, that I call cheese hacking, which is to watch our competitors, see what they're doing, and try to adapt all this process to our business. So, and I'm developing this, and I'm going to, and I'm teaching this in the in my courses. Okay, um, today we're going to carry on um, talking about the problems when we make cheese. We're gonna finish today, and because we didn't finish last week, it took longer that that I normally do. So the thing is that we're going to finish it today, okay? Um, in the, in my, uh, I hope we don't have pro, uh, problems with the audio. That's, um, earlier we had problem with the, with the audio and I connected the, the cable directly from my router. So I wasn't wi in Wi-Fi and my iPad. <laughs> we are already 24, 000, almost 25,000 subscribers, 20, uh, 20, uh, 24, 800 and plus, something like that. And thank you to Luis Lopez Moreno from Venezuela, I reckon from Venezuela, in the support category. And if you want to support the, the show and if you, want, if you want to ask any question and you want to give us a super chat, st uh, super stickers or super thanks, you're more than welcome. I don't know how to do it. Um, you, you guys have to find out. And your support or you yeah we will support the show as well and let me tell you that i made cheese with homogenized milk i could i could find it i could get it uh, with a mixture of cream and the milk of course the cheese is not uh, as good as it should be but for pizza it's fine okay so um, and soon I'm going to release a video. I already uh, record the footage, but I'm still doing the video. Okay, the Reque Jaco to Peri. I'm going to um, finish it soon, the video. And there is an interview in the, that a, a journalist made me last week and um, from Venezuela. Um, if you want to find a look at the, um, at the interview, just go to my Facebook, Instagram, all my social media, and you can you will find about in Spanish. That if you have a translator, you can translate it easy to English. Okay, this is what I do when I read something in other languages. I just use Google, so we're not gonna invent the wheels. <clears throat> I'm gonna make now that every week I have to I answer questions. I'm going what I'm doing here is I'm going to develop a book of the most common problems when we make cheese. I'm going to release. Uh, it's going to be very easy to make to write the book because I already have the, the, the questions. Now I just need to answer. And I have done it every week. What I'm going to do is just write the book and, and, I, have, and I have to, I'm, I'm going to make two, two versions. One free, a free one and a paid one. <clears throat> you will soon know about it. Okay. And well, let's go and start the presentation. I'm going to speak about the problems that when we make cheese. If you want to have um, if you uh, if you want to ask something, just let me know and I will answer here. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to also answer the the question of my audience that every week they they answer they ask and I'm also included in several Facebook groups and these people maybe they don't come to the show but they read the 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 answer later on and I'm going to answer these questions as well. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's go and. With the presentation, I'm gonna start from the beginning. I'm gonna go fast because we have we have been doing this for the for the last two shows. Okay, so this is our show number fifty one. 
I reckon 53 now. Um, the problem number one is when the milk doesn't cut the reason are here, okay? Lack of calcium and low acidity. Um, low temperature solution, increase all the calcium chloride, increase the dose of the rennet. As I said, in the last two shows, I went in detail with this quest with this question so I'm gonna go fast here okay number two I, I finish in number eight I reckon yeah so I'm gonna start deep in number eight so problem number two chase the cheese the cheese tastes too sour these are the reasons and this is the solution <coughs> no problem number three at an early age the cheese has too many holes and it's difficult to remove it this is cross contamination basically okay Coli contamination in the solution, you have to improve your hygiene protocols. Problem number four, the cheese, when heated, does not melt. It can happen for many reasons. Um, lack of acidity, because when, to, when the cheese, for the cheese to stretch, you have to have a certain amount of acidity. I'm talking about the curd. If the curd is not acid, the cheese will not stretch. If it is too acid, it will not stretch either. So we have to be into the bandwidth. And this is the basic to make mozzarella or any pasta filata cheese like provolone, like cacio cavallo, like bocconcini, etc. etc. Okay? So, um, possible contamination by bactrophage. I, I went into details in my last to show what is bactrophage. Uh, expired, de uh, starters, or dead. <clears throat> um, maybe until. Values in the milk solution. I have the solution here. The pH should be between 5.1 and 5.3. When we make mozzarella, we have to measure the pH. If the pH is not in the, in the, in the right, on the right band, it will not stretch. If it is above 5.3, it will not stretch. And if it is below 5.1, it will not stretch either. Sometimes it's straight at 5.0. Sometimes it depends on the calcium content. But in this case, um, in theory, in general terms should be between 5.1 and 5.5. Okay. okay, problem number five, the cheese was too dry, maybe because we cut too small. Okay, these are the reasons. Solution, cut, cut bigger. Um, monitor the temperature. Sometimes when the cheese is too dry, it's because we heat it too much. We heat it too, um, too much. So we have to reduce the, the, the temperature and the time. Number six, the curd is too wet, it's the other way around. Maybe you cut too big, the solution you have to cut smaller. Um, in a day with production of lactic acid, curd heated <clears throat> very quickly. The curd was heated <clears throat> to low temperature because if, if it is too wet, synergesis was too little. So we have to increase synergesis. How? How? We have we increase the temperature, we increase the acid lactic production. And we left them the heating time. We cut smaller, as I said before. Okay, problem number seven. Melted cheese is turning yellow or hard. Okay, I don't know if I finish here. I reckon I, I'm going to go deep in this one. I'm going to go slower in this one. So when the cheese, sometimes the cheese, when we are making mozzarella, sometimes the cheese, yellow and it becomes really hard to handle it and it doesn't give a good appearance okay so this can happen to several reasons one of the reasons is that we have maybe too much fat in the milk especially when we are using jersey cows and we are or we are using jersey milk that they have a high fat content so we have to maybe standardize the milk to avoid it to avoid this. Sometimes another reason is that we um we heat we heat it too too much and then um, no I, I remember that I, I spoke about it last week. But anyway I'm gonna say it again. When we heat the curve sometimes we heat too fast and the epithelium that covers the casein get dehydrated by getting dehydrated 
okay? And it loses, it loses too much moisture and um, the heat, the, the curve, grab this, this color, okay? <clears throat> um, heat in rate too fast, okay? And sometimes, it, it, it not, not only that it turns yellow, sometimes it grabs like a grainy texture because the, um, the curve, this epithelium covers the casein and the too much heat um, dissolves this epithelium, put it, in, let's put it this way, and all the fat will really be released. And this, is what, and this happens when you are heating in the, in the pan instead of the boil water. Or hot water. When we are heating in the, um, into the pan or into the pot, the pasta filata cheese, instead of doing it with hot water, it happens because we are we're having the fire over there and the rate of heat is too fast, it's too high, and this the heat dissolves the, the the free fat that covers the sorry the, the this epithelium that covers the gasoline. solution. Slow, lower the, the amount, uh, um, lower the rate of, of heating. Okay, reduce the fat content by standardization. How do you do? How do you reduce the fat content? You have to put skim milk to your milk. You have, have to, there's a process called standardization, and there is a, um, a trick that we use um, through the. This is called the Pearson square. When we use the Pearson square, we um, we make some numbers. It has a video in my channel how to and how to use the, the Pearson square. Um, and I reckon I have the English version as well. So um, if we um, if we are going to make, for example, a cheese with a higher fat content, we have to put cream. If we have if we are going to make a cheese with a lower fat content, we have to put uh, skim milk. But there is a calculus that we need to do. And we do it through this Pearson square. If you want more details, go and watch the video, and there is a whole video explaining how, how to do it. Okay, it's very easy, but you need to understand it. Okay, the other, the other um, solution is to place the cheese in water with a little bit of calcium chloride, right? and the amount should be more or less half a milliliter per liter of water without salt. Okay. Or maybe a small amount of salt. I would say one percent, two percent of salt max, because uh, the salt will dehydrate the 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 casein that covers the um, the mozzarella, and and you may have this problem. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, what I do, I don't like putting the, the mozzarella in the. the water that much because sometimes if we don't get the right texture in the mozzarella it might get a little bit slower um, blur, um, slimy a little bit slimy so um, and, and the sliminess is because the external part of the mozzarella is getting hydrated so he, he would get too much um yeah he get he would get too much hydration on the external part because of the um, difference in the uh, acidity level of the curd and the acidity level of the um, of the water. So um, you have to use like like, like um, brine solution with pretty much the same pH. In this way, you can avoid the slimeness. Um, so what I do is wrap the cheese with plastic wrap to avoid these problems. I have, I when I, I I don't put it in water, I just wrap it up, up with plastic film and vacuum pack. Okay. And the cheese will maintain their moisture and it will not become um, slimy um, and it will be always fresh. Okay? It, it, will, it will not lose temper, it will not lose uh, moisture, it will not gain moisture either. Okay? Uh, problem number eight the cheese, when we are wrapping the cheese, we have fungus or mold on the rind. This is unavoidable. When we are making this type of cheeses, we always have mold in our cheese. What we have to do is maintain, give maintenance. 
When we see a small, a small spot of mold, just clean it with vinegar or clean it with the Ryan solution at 25, 26 percent. Just clean them up, and we have to watch our cheeses like our babies every day. We have to turn it over at least until the first two weeks. After that, we can turn it over, turn, turn it over once a week, twice a week. It will depend on the cheese that you want to make. Okay. Um, why we have this mold? Sometimes because the pH on the rind is too high. When the pH is too high, it's alkaline. So um, <coughs> if we have mold developed on the rind, the most probable um, answer for that is that we have cross contamination with fungi or yeast. But that's not the end of the world. It is unavoidable because if we're leaving the cheese exposed to the elements, we are going to have mold around, around on the on the air. So um, you just need to maintain the cheese, wash it up, clean it. That's not a big problem. Okay. Um, the mold also develops because this, our salt content is very, very low. So if we put too little salt on the, in the core, the mold will develop. But there are some molds, especially the ones that you use for for making rock for cheese they, they they are very tolerant to soil five percent even a little bit more so um when even if we have a, a high level of soil <clears throat> the cheese will always have more or we still get more of course a little amount of salt of salt will allow the mold to grow up and when the cheese is also very more, um, wet, when, we, when our cheese is wet, the mold will be like a, um, a good environment for the mold to develop. So, so this moisture will, will be a good environment for the mold to develop. So um, we need to um, control the uh, relative humidity when you are making this type of cheese. But it will depend on, on the type of cheese. If you are making, for example, camembert, you need 85% um, relative humidity. If you are making another cheese, maybe you need less or more. If you are making, for example, Manche um, Roquefort cheese, we need 90% uh, relative humidity. So we have to put water into the cheese cave so the humidity, or we have, sometimes we have to spray the cheese once in a while <clears throat> with atomizers. Um, I mean, um, emit moisture sometimes, okay? But too much mo moisture will develop the moist, the, the, the mold. But it depends on the type of cheese that you are making. High moisture content means that you're going to have mold. No question asked, okay? Solution. If you want to, to, if you want to avoid the mold, you have to lower your moisture content you have, have to increase your soap you have, have to uh, find protocols that um, fight against your cross contamination and you have to lower the pH the other way around I want to say here okay clean your cheese with vinegar by cleaning the cheese with vinegar we are lowering the pH of the rind because the vinegar is acid or acidic if we are cleaning the the rind with vinegar, we are lowering the pH on the on the rind, and therefore the mold will not grow. You have to review another solution: review your maturation protocol, because if you have cross contamination in your cheese, maybe your your hygienic is not very good, and you have to um, or sometimes you have too much moisture, and you don't want that, so you have to review. Protocol. You have to reduce the moisture content. Another, um, as I say here, increases salt content. And, and sometimes, if you want to lower the moisture content, you have to heat, heat the core a little bit longer so it can lose, it lose moisture. Okay. And problem number nine <clears throat> after placing the rennet, the milk coagulates intensely. <clears throat> it happens very frequently. 
especially when we are using the, the way from the from the last batch. <coughs> um, some cheese makers used to um, or they are they are, are used to you, instead of using um, lactic culture to save costs, they use the way from the from the late from the day before. But the thing is that even though it is true that, that uh, all the bacteria or the lactic bacteria is in the way, or pretty much 85%, the other thing is that the rennet, 85% of the rennet is also in the way. So when you heat the milk or you, when you put the whey into your new milk and you heat it to the right temperature, the milk will coagulate instantly. Sometimes when we use a lot of rennet, or too much rennet, it will cut as well. But let's see. Um, let's see some of the reasons. Okay, too much acidity in the milk. This is one reason. Correct. When we have too much acidity on the milk, if our milk is too acid, and we put the rennet to coagulate, it will cut instantly because the milk is too acid. We don't want that. Okay, too much, and we. We don't want that because um, we have acid in our milk, and we have acid in our milk because we ripen the milk too long. So we have to reduce the maturation time or the ripening time. Okay, and maybe your milk is old. You have uh, in the, in my last show uh, in the Spanish show of today's um, in today's uh, Spanish show I spoke about the old milk. And when the milk is old, there's going to be acid production, especially if the, if the temperature is not very good. Because the bacteria is going to start to reproduce and feed from the lactose and produce the lactic acid. So when the milk is old or spoiled or rotten, we're going to have this problem because we're going to have acid, too much acid or too much acidity in the milk. Okay, solution. The other way around. We have to lower the acidity level of the milk by using fresh milk as fresh as possible. Um, and I want to you, and I want to stop here for, for one minute. If you use all milk, there's a 100% guarantee that your cheese is not going to be good. Now, but if you use, on the other way around, if you use fresh milk as fresh as possible, You might get, get a bad cheese if you, you don't know how to make cheese. But if you know how to make cheese, if you know how to do, if you do know, know how to make cheese, you will get a good product because you are using fresh milk, and you will have this lactic flavor of the milk. And then once the cheese is made, if you leave it longer, you want to ripen it, the cheese will develop the enzymes and all the stuff that they develop, and your the flavor will improve. Will increase and will be better each day. But if you use all milk, rotten milk, for sure your milk, your cheese is not going to be good. Even though if you even though you know if you know how to make cheese, yes, so my best use the milk as fresh as possible. So solution for that reduce the um, sometimes if you have too much acidity, but sometimes you put too much rennet as well. I didn't put it here, but if you put too much rennet, your milk will coagulate in. So, solution reduce the dose of lactic acid so you don't have too much acid production or, or reduce the dose of your rennet. Okay, I, don't, I didn't put it here, but this is one solution. If your milk is coagulated too fast and it's not giving you time for anything and, and you didn't have time to, to cut it because you, you put the rennet steer and after one minute, boom, boom, you started curdling and curdling instantly. Instant, Maybe you have to reduce your rennet, your rennet in, I mean, to reduce the rennet amount that you're using to give time to, to for a minute to coagulate accordingly. But you need to remember that when you put rennet, you only have one minute to steer. Because after one minute, <clears throat> the milk will start to curdle. The enzyme will start breaking the protein in smaller parts or in smaller chains. So you need to be really fast. Give it one minute. <clears throat> no more than that. 
<coughs> for that, you have to use if you if you are making small amounts, no problem. You can do it by hand. But if you're using machinery, if you are handling, for example, five thousand liters of milk, you have to use machinery. So you put the rain in it. The, what we do is we just start steering first, and then we put the rain in it, and the machine in one minute will steer everything. Okay, otherwise, you're gonna have cordial points, different cordial points into your bat. So you need to be careful. Okay. Okay. Um, another another solution: use fresh milk, as I said before. Yeah. The better the milk, the better your cheese will be. And problem number ten: during maturing maturation, pink spots appear on the shell of the cheese. This is cross contamination. Without watching the the screen and. The name of the bacteria is called Micrococcus roseus. Okay, it's a, a small um, reddish spot. I like, like um, it looks like the bacterium, but this one doesn't produce the, the, the odor and the flavor of the of the, of the, of the bacterium. This is different. This is like a red, like a rose spot. So Micrococcus roseus invasion, oxidation. Do to fluorescent lights, that's another reason as well. Okay, and if you have this kind of cross contamination, it's because your your hygiene is not very good. You need so you need to improve your sanitation protocol. You need to improve improve your your your, your protocol, your hygiene in your, in your in your kitchen or in your plant. If you are making cheese at home, you need to increase your protocols, your hygiene protocols, and for that you have to follow the system. I'm gonna speak about the system a little bit later. On. Um, wait, I lost my cable. I lost my cable. So wait, the battery of the computer. Let me. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about that. My computer. Gave me a sign that it was going to be charged. I don't know why. So I realized that the cable wasn't on. on so I just plug it back in. All right. Um, another reason. Um, sorry. Solution. As I said before, the other way around here, the opposite. Lack of hygiene. You need to improve your hygiene. Um, oxidation due to fluorescent light. You have to avoid the fluorescent light. Um, Avoid air, to, to avoid the microcosmos roses, you, you need to have, have positive pressure into your into your bat. Sorry, into your into your plant or the, where you put your cheese. So the microcosmos and stop over your cheese. So avoid, avoid air stream in the ripening area. Okay? Improve the hygiene protocols. And if you have this um, pink spot. A good practice is to clean your cheese with um, vinegar, and the acid will kill them. This pink spot. Okay. okay this is all, all for today, guys. And um, if you want to learn more about, about cheese making, I invite you to have a look to my book, The Beginner Bible for Cheese Making. It's in Kindle. You just type my name in Kindle, and you will find the book. The book is only 1.5 American dollars. 1.5. Why I made it so cheap? Because I know that at my, at my, part of my audience is from third world countries and, and countries, poor, poor countries, and I don't want the price to be an obstacle. So, and I know that, that people can make a business of cheese making as, as I did. And when I when I, I remember when I came to um, to New Zealand, I didn't have, I was an engineer, but um, I knew that and the first thing that I uh, and the first thing that I missed was my cheeses. And through the time, people have been interested in my cheeses. Not only Venezuelan, I'm from Venezuela. Not only Venezuelan, South American ones. People from here, here from New Zealand, they like my cheeses from Samoa 
Tonga, con Tonga, con Niu, Niue. Islanders, they like our, uh, the Venezuelan cheeses. And, well, I, I make it a bit of it. You can do the same. Okay? Um, and with, the, with my book, you're going to make, you're going to be able to make any type of cheese. It's cheese making. It's not South American cheese. It's cheese making. And the book also has 55 recipes of homemade cheeses. Okay? So uh, if you want to go and find it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an e-book. Just go, click on the link here, and you will be able to get the, the book, okay? Also, if you want to learn how to make cheese, I invite you to take my course, my English course, my, my cheese making course for beginners. This is the link here, okay? Um, I have here. This message here that I'm bothering me. Okay? This is the link. If you, if you want to learn how to make cheese, the cheese is in the, in the, even though my, my, I speak Spanish in the course, all the videos are translated in five languages. This is in English, in Chinese, in Hindi, Spanish, and uh, Arabic. Okay? So, how do you get into the, into the, into the cheese? Into, into the cheese course? Once you click the link, this link here, you're going to be transferred to a, to a funnel, to a cell funnel. And this cell funnel will tell you how, how, how explain everything about the course. And then when you pay, you're going to get a, um, you're going to have your user and password. With this user and password and the link, you're going to go here. You put here your, your, your user and your password enter to the platform, and the platform will take you to this screen here. And then you're going to see all the information. If you have a, um, if the information is in Spanish, you can use the translator. And you will have all the information in English. So, so the, the language is not a problem anymore. However, I have the information here in English and in Spanish. So you can do, you can read it easily. And this is what the course includes. You can, with the um, translator, you can see what you have here. But anyway, it's the introduction of the cheese making, um, the technique to make cheese, and how is the maturation process? I speak about all the all the problems and solutions, um, and then there is a video for each item. The videos are pre-recorded, so you don't have to take a, like a live course or something. No, it's pre-recorded, and you do it at your own, own pace. You um, you just watch the video. There are more than forty videos and eighteen cheeses, and, and you're gonna. The 80 cheese. Each cheese has a video. You make the cheese, but not only the video. After that, um, by, by getting the by taking the course, you're gonna be part of our community, the Dr. Casero community or the cheese doctor community, and you, you will be included in my Facebook group, and you will interact with all the students and with us. And you, any question that you have, we're gonna answer for you, and we're gonna hold you by the hand to hold to make you. Um, to make you su succeed. So um, by joining the, the show, uh, by joining the, our coaching program, you will be guided by us and for sure you will succeed because we will guide you. Okay? Some other courses are just they give you the videos and it's your problem if you watch the videos and make the cheese. No. In my program, in my, in my coaching program, you want to watch the video, you have to study, you have to, to make the cheeses, but if you have a problem with the cheese, we're going to tell you what to do. We're going to tell you where you find the milk. We're going to tell you what type of brand you use. To use. We're going to show us, hey, you use this, this brand. Okay, let's use this amount. Sometimes you don't have the, the amount to use, and so we're going to guide you back. Okay, which no one's offer that. So these are the courses, and also we're going to have we do. Um, periodically, live streams that only for my group. This, um, these live streams are not broadcasted in the in my YouTube channel. They are in another channel called the um, uh, Cheese Doctor University. So, and um, this is the channel that is on for the course. Um, so the idea is that it's only for my students. Okay, all the videos are going to be there, and these lives are going to be hosted 
over here. So these are all the cheeses that include more cheeses and, and as I said, the live streamings. Okay. And also videos that I consider interesting. So I hook them over there. For example, I'm going to hook a video how to make cheese with, with homogenized milk. How to make mozzarella with homogenized milk. By adding cream. But you have to standardize your milk. But how? You have to put a special amount of cream into your into your milk. And you have to standardize it between a bandwidth. I'll include this in the course. So why is included in my course? As I said, uh, before I go with I, I, I go with the um, I didn't include it here. I forgot. But before you take my what is included? First of all, you're gonna have a 14 days trial free. Uh, after the 14 days, if you decide not to take the course, no question ask, we're not gonna charge your credit card. So if you want uh, um, of course, you want to try the system first. You want to watch the videos, some videos first, because you know you're going to watch it in 14 days. But anyway, it doesn't matter. At least you, you will watch something. But if you like what you see, you carry on with the program. If you don't like it, you can stop it at it before the 14 days. And you, you're not going to be charged. Okay? And plus to that, a free copy of my book, The Beginning of Cheese Making, which is going to be, the price is going to be raised in $15, maybe today or tomorrow. To do the loan, so I reckon it's gonna be tomorrow because my wife is I'm my wife here, so <laughs> um, I have to do my I have to do the, the, the loan first and then I will update the price. Okay. The five coaching sessions of 45 minutes each is, is value in one thousand dollars because my time, okay, or the time of my oh, one of my assistants. And with these coaching sessions, you will not use them if you have a problem. And these coaching sessions are one one to one. So we're going to be in a Zoom call, me and you, or one of my team members, and you're going to expose your problems, what problem do you have, and we're going to guide you by the hand. After the coaching session, after your five coaching sessions, you can use it whenever you want, and however you want. After your five coaching sessions, you won't have more of them, that you can go to the, to the, to the Facebook group, and ask any question, and we want to answer for free. You don't have to pay anything for it. Okay. If, if you want another coaching session, besides the five one that you already got, you will have to pay that. But it's not a big, not a big deal. Okay. As I said before, more than forty videos, which are the are value of two hundred ninety dollars, and the recipes, which is value on two hundred fifty dollars more or less. The access to the private group that I already called, that I already told you on Facebook. This this group I call them the cheese crack because at the beginning you you're a cheese crack, you're not a cheese master. You're gonna be a cheese master when you finish the course like me. But before that, you're gonna be you're, you you are a cheese crack like a baby, a cheese crack. And you will have access to the Venezuelan cheese webinar, which is in value. Three hundred dollars, and this is very important. You're gonna have a cheese kit, a free one. It's value in forty-five dollars, but you will have it for free. You will only have to pay shipping, and the shipping is pretty much twenty. I don't, I don't know. Um, um, it's about twenty or thirty dollars. Yeah, more or less, depending on the country, of course. That you, the, but in average, it's about twenty dollars. I have sent cheese, a cheese kit to. America, they have charged forty dollars. I have sent cheese here to New Zealand. They charge fifteen dollars. So in average, twenty dollars. Okay. Um, the exclusive access to my private live streaming that I spoke before. Um, these live streams are different from the one that I'm doing today. For example, the cheese. Uh, you're gonna be. You're gonna have access um, to my. A lifetime membership of Cheese Crack. This, this Cheese Crack Club will enjoy of articles and um, new suppliers that are fine and that are interesting and they are cheap. If you want, it's more pretty much for people that want to make business and uh, cheese making as a business, which is a very profitable one. Um, if you are in 
telling you. If you making cheese and you live in a country where there is, for example, cheddar, and you're gonna make cheddar, you're going to compete with other with the other one, maybe bigger than you, and you will not be able to compete. The thing of this cheese, and, and this is called this is what we call cheese hacking. We wanna use, we wanna watch our competitors, and we're going to use. So we're going to choose what the, the good things that they have, and we're going to, to adapt. We're going to adapt it to our niche. And the idea is to make unique products with low competitions and demand. Cheese is like everyone. And everyone loves cheeses. But if you are smart, very smart, and you are you are smart enough, you will have or you will develop a product that. Will not have competition, and you will succeed. You will succeed, and, and you will success. Sorry, and you will have you will develop this product that no one has. You won't have competitors, and you can charge whatever you want. So, so for example, I make my I make my Venezuelan cheeses, and my cheeses are. I charge. I sell my cheese like, like they call it hand cheese, queso de mano, in Venezuela. I sell it at $110 per kilo, New Zealand dollars, which is pretty much $80 American. So um, if I go to the supermarket, the mozzarella is at $70 per kilo. But my cheese, which is the same mozzarella, the different name, I charge it at $110 per kilo. $40 more per kilo because it's a different I don't say that it's mozzarella. I say that it's Venezuelan cheese. So, or Venezuelan style cheese. So, so, that's the thing. We are hacking the product. We are hacking the mozzarella and we are making it develop a different cheese. This is what we do. And of course, you have to, I'm going to teach you the techniques how to do this. In the course. Okay, this is called cheese hacking. And the, the, the shirt, when you finish your course, I'm going to give you as a gift. A free T-shirt. You will only have to pay the shipping to help me out with the shipping cost. That's it. Um, but gonna, for me, it's gonna be a big pleasure when you make when you finish your course and you will become a cheese master. And as a as an award, I want to give to you um, the T-shirt that um, is gonna have here cheese hacker <laughs> or cheese uh, cheese master. I haven't I haven't decided yet what to do. But um, the most, I reckon the most, most probably scenario will be cheese hacker. Okay, because that's the thing we have to. We only have in, in, in the world 12 families of cheese. But we have more than 2,000 cheeses, but they are reduced to two families, 12 families. That's it. Different, different they have, they only, the trick is that they have different names. Mozzarella is, for example, mozzarella. It's mozzarella, right? That's the main cheese. But this is also called Oaxaca cheese, eh, eh, quesillo cheese, siete cueros cheese, queso de mano, double cream cheese in Colombia. Um, the provolone, if, we, if, the, if the mozzarella is ripened and aged, you're going to get dry and it will become layer provolone. So that is the same mozzarella, you just need to age it. Cacho Cavallo, all of them are pasta filata cheeses. The thing is that they are aged, they are ripe, they put it, the, 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 the cheese maker, dry them up, let it age, put in the cheese cake, and they develop more flavor. And it's a different cheese, but the basic is the same. This is what people don't know that we do, and this is what we teach here. Yeah? So, um, the desktop for the phone, 15% discount in my store forever, which this is. It's valued by uh, on the hundred dollar, which is, is, is more, but this is what I put. The spreadsheet to calculate your cost. If you're gonna sell cheese, you have to make the numbers. And I already did the job for you. Or I already did the homework for you. I'll teach you through this Excel sheet that I'm gonna send you for, for free. Not for free because it's, it's included in the price, but it's, it's value fifteen dollars. And, and you will be able to calculate it with materials equipment and labor 
and you will be able to calculate your price as it should be. And in this way, we, you will not work for free. You will make, you will develop a cheese, and you will have profit. All, also, the Pearson square, because sometimes you have to add, you standardize your milk. You have to add cream. You have to take the cream from the milk, and, and I'm going to teach you how in the course because we have a special part of standardization. So I'm going to teach you how to do it, and I'm going to give you the worksheet so you can make the numbers first. If you want, for example, a cheese with two percent fat or three percent, your milk is three point three point four, but you want a cheese two point five percent, a reduced fat and cheese with the, with this Pearson square, and you're going to be able to do it. I'm going to give it to you for free. And one and the, the most important thing, when you are making cheese, you need to you need to have a permit. You have to have a permit to make cheese. And to get a permit is a pain in the butt. I'll tell you by experience. Um, and you have to develop a system. You have to prove that, that your cheese or the cheese that you're making is safe to the consumer. And the only way that you can prove that your cheese is safe is by building a system. And you're going to have to hire a consultant because you don't know how to build a system. You're going to have to hire a consultant, which I this is what I did when I first started. You have um, I hire a consultant. And, and once the system is in place, you have, have to taste it. And you have to hire a, verifi a verifier to verify the system for you. And you need to pay. And it, it'll cost you more or less $7,000. I pay $7,000. And eight months of work. Because to develop the system, the consultant took about six months. And after six months, she gave me everything. And then I hired the verifier to verify my system. They put it in this by booking. It is by booking. So it took me eight months of my time, which I'm giving you only including the, in, the, in the system. So I pay about $7,000. Which is pretty much four thousand American, and I'm going to include it in, the, in your in the, in the in the course. These are, are all my Excel sheets, all my protocols, all, all my forms, and, and I'm working in developing this system in the software, and I'm going to include it as well when I finish it, and I'm going to give it to you for free by per, um, on a certain time, okay, by a certain by a period of time. It's going to be free. So you're gonna have to pay the license back. But you're gonna have to, because I want you to try it, I want you to test it, I want you to use it. And it's gonna be the same system. Once the software is finished, you will not need the Excel sheets anymore. But you will you will use because you're gonna use my software maybe for a year, and then next year you can renew it, but you're gonna have a year free for some when I finish. I'm working on it and it's gonna be finished soon. And the my software. But it's not going to be only the system. It's going to be also, also my virtual store, my, my e-commerce store, my, the marketing, the marketing um, model. Because you don't do anything making cheese if no one if no one buy it. So I'm going to include all these protocols, all these systems in the in, in the software that I'm going to make. So you're going to be able with the software. It's going to be it's going to be like all, all in one solution, and you're going to be able to. To market your cheeses from this from the platform that I'm going to to give to develop, you're gonna be able to check the quality of your cheese. You're gonna be able to um to sell the cheese through your website right? because you're gonna have an e-commerce and people will go to the cheese, will go to them to them to your store. You'll, the cheese will be there. They just click it, put it in the basket, and pay through the credit card. All this is gonna be included in the in the, in the software. But for now, I'm going to give you the system. It's included for $4,000. Okay? The ebook of Homemade Venezuelan Economy, which is my book that if you want to make a difference in your country and you want to make Venezuelan cheeses, which are very exotic cheeses that no one has, you will be able to make it. And I'm going to send you the book. Okay? It's going it's to be a free copy. Have to pay them. It's, it's a hard copy. It's not a. I don't have. I haven't developed any book yet. It's gonna be 
be a hard copy, and you only have to pay shipping. Okay, that's gonna be a free book. And also, two videos of Venice of um, two videos of um, vegan and vegan cheese. This is what it costs seven thousand dollars, almost eight thousand dollars, and it's a lot of money. I'm gonna charge this. I'm gonna charge three hundred forty dollars. Okay. But if you take my course today, you will pay two hundred dollars, two hundred ninety dollars until tomorrow. Today and tomorrow. And if you want to go and know something, if you want to um, have access, just click on the funnel here on this link, and you. I'm gonna put it anyway in the comments, and you will be able. To by taking, by going to this link, you will have, you will be transferred to this form. Just fill the form, put your, your data, the bump if you want, the bump offer, and go here. It's in Spanish, but you have um, you use your Google Translator, and you will have the information in English. Okay? Okay, let's go with the questions. And let's see what we are here. Okay? Okie dokie. Let's go. And I have a question here. Let's see. Um, it says here, um, Jennifer. So Linda. Linda is asking, Hi, Cheese Doctor. A quick one for you. After I've set the cord hanging in muslin, I usually make ricotta with the whey. Next morning, I have a bag of dry of dryest curd and a bowl of soft ricotta. Can I mix the two together at the milling stage and press them into one cheese? We have far more ricotta than we can eat fast enough. Is there a reason why this won't work or shouldn't be done? Well, look, Linda, when you make ricotta, when you make ricotta, you are, um, you have to hit the, you have to hit the way, correct? And by hitting the way, all the bacteria is dying because it's at 85 degrees. So the, the, the ricotta is popping up. And all the enzymes might get denatured. So you will have ricotta, lactic ricotta, but not much flavor. So it's a different cheese, ricotta and cheese is a different cheese, two different cheeses. So my suggestion, don't try to change the world and do some two different cheeses. What you can do is maybe add some kind of flavor to your ricotta or maybe sell your ricotta, the, your, the rest of the ricotta you're making, you might sell it. In my case, for example, I have the same problem. I produce a lot of whey I just dump it because I'm, um, I'm not going to make ricotta. I make ricotta once in a while. If I have, um, if I have like um, orders from ricotta. But one thing that you can do as well, and I, I just thought about it, do something with your ricotta. Just put it put it into a mold, press it and compact it. It's gonna get hard. Dry them up, and then you're gonna make, you're gonna achieve like a, a, a small block of ricotta, but dry, it's gonna be hard. And this ricotta, you can sell it as vintage ricotta or ripened ricotta. So this ricotta is gonna be hard, you can grind it, and it's very good for pasta. Tell you because I made a video. If you go to my to my TikTok, I made a video grinding the ricotta. This ricotta was aged about two months. It was really hard, really dry. I grind it and put in pasta, and the flavor was awesome. So this is one. This you can do that. So go ahead. I invite you to do it and tell me about it. Okay. Okay, another question. How much are we with the time? 
Gee, almost one hour. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go with two more questions. M. Creech, have you ever um, have you ever used the paint on aging cheese? I'm wondering about the health of it versus plastic vacuum seal or wax. Well, look, um, these paints are to preserve the cheese. If they are food graded, don't worry about it. You're not going to have any problem with it. Now, if they're not food graded, you have to worry about it. So, um, I normally use wax. When we are making cheese and we, have, and we want to preserve the moisture content, what I do is I, or either vac first, depending on the cheese that you're making. If you are making, for example, um, I make Venezuela, I, I make South American cheeses. There is a cheese from Argentina called queso cremoso, which is cream cheese in Spanish or in English. Queso cremoso, cream cheese in Spanish. But it's different, it's different as the cream cheese that we make, that we normally make. Or sometimes it's a cheese called por salud. The texture is like a ripened mozzarella, more or less. It's very creamy and very creamy. So um, when we are making this cheese, um, I've, wait, I lost the question. Uh, okay, now, sorry, <laughs> I missed the point. Um, so this cheese, uh, we are making this fresh cheese and we vacuum pack it. This cheese doesn't have any rind and the cheese will become creamier, as I said. This cheese is called queso cremoso. That is the same fresh cheese that is been ripened for a while. So um, what I do is instead of wax it, I vacuum pack it. The cheese will not develop a rind and will become creamier every day. So um, you can do that. Instead of painting it. If you want to paint it, it's up to you, but if the paint should be food graded. And it's pretty much like um, paint to preserve the moisture. I prefer to wax it. Because if I wax it, then I can recover the wax once the cheese is done. Very important, if you are doing this, your rind should be dry. Otherwise, you will not get a good finishing on your cheese. And your, your, um, the film that you put on the, or the, the wax film or the, um, this paint film will uh, come off. So you have to be, you have to have a, a dry rind, okay? What people do is pretty much vacuum pack the cheeses. So that's, that's the thing. Okay, and the last one, the last question, um, it says here, Jennifer is asking, what is, hi cheese doctor, how are you? What is, the, what is your favorite wine for drunken goat cheese or cow? My first attempt was Cabernet Sauvignon, which isn't bad, but I'm wondering if sometimes if something sweeter would complement the cheese. I'm not a wine drinker, which, uh, which makes it harder. Look, Jennifer, cheese making is an art, isn't it? So you are the artist. By making cheese, you, you're the artist. You can do whatever you want. If you want to use Cabernet Sauvignon, use Cabernet Sauvignon. If you want to use Malbec, you can use Malbec. Shiraz, Shiraz. If you want to use Riesling, which is a white wine, you can use Riesling. You're the artist and you're the cheese maker. And your cheese is going to have your touch, your personal touch. So Malvice. Don't use a cheap wine because this is a product that you're going to eat. A, um, a, a cheap wine will give you maybe off flavors in the cheese. So, but I understand as well that if you use a, an expensive wine for making cheese, the cheese, the, the cheese is going to expel whey, the whey is going to be mixed with the wine. So 
My advice, use a middle one, a middle quality one. Don't use a, don't use a shitty one. Use and don't use an expensive one. Use a, 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 a one in the middle. A, a midline wine will give you um, a, a, a decent flavor and you will not have to spend so much money. Okay? Okay, that's it. Um, thank you for coming, everyone, and, and we'll see you next week. And remember, you are just one cheese away from your dreams. It's your choice to find out what cheese are you going to make to make the cheese that's going to change your life. Take it easy and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son. El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor. Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son. El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor. Quesos colombianos y venezolanos, todo hecho en tu casa. Con sabor zuliano y calor humano. Los quesos en casa tienen vitaminas rápidos de hacer. En cualquier cocina. Tan fácil como pelar mandarinas Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son El doctor quesero te enseña con sabor Quesitos en casa, fáciles de hacer son